Hey, Nee, how are you? Hey, Rachel, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Um, we've got a few folks coming in still now. I feel like it'll probably take like five or so minutes for everyone to come in, but um, yes. me and I were chatting a few minutes ago and we actually have 80 people registered for this session, which is so awesome. That's um, almost as many as we can actually hold on our Zoom. So <laughs> hopefully it doesn't sell out because I know a lot of people wanted to come see it, but yeah, this is super awesome. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited for the session and just to have this as a resource for our companies moving forward that uh, we've never really done a workshop on Photoshop or any sort of design principles before. So it's going to be sweet. Hey, awesome. Looking forward to it. Sure. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um, but yeah, so we've got a few people in the chat here. Um, like I said, since there are a lot of folks coming, we won't have time to go through and do any like big introductions, but um, definitely send a little message into the chat introducing you and why you're here today. Um, and then, yeah, I'm sure that'd be helpful for you Nee, to see as we go through. Um, and yeah, I'll keep an eye on any questions in there just to kind of relate to you near the end. Um, and also I'm gonna have to step out like right at 1.30, but the rest of the team will still be around for a bit. Um, I just, I have an emergency dentist appointment this afternoon. So everyone wish me luck. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, me, I'll pass it over to you if you wanna do like a quick little introduction on yourself before we get started. And then maybe at like 12.05, we can start a screen share. All right. Hey guys, my name is Ni Adiogun, and I'm a graphic artist and visual artist as well. So I've been um, I've been into design for about like three years now. So so I've been like into Photoshop since like 2017, and uh, I've kind of been focusing on that for a while. So yeah, that's kind of like the basic, you know, introduction I could give. <laughs> but yeah, that's that's what's up, and I really appreciate you guys coming in for today's workshop. It means a lot. This is my first workshop as well, so I'm looking forward to it, and I'm looking forward to share my ideas and share my knowledge, basically. Yeah. That's awesome. I think it'd be good. And three years. Wow, that's crazy. Because yeah. you're, yeah, you're great at what you do. Everyone will see that after this today. But no, I'm really excited. Outside of my work with Startup Zone, I do like a little bit of design. So I ran into me at his pop up actually, where I was just completely fangirling over all of his art. So I'm really excited to see like the process behind it today. Um, but yeah, me, if you want to try out your screen share just to kind of yeah. get things ready to go. Um, and yeah, then I'll stop talking. <laughs> all right. Let me see. Okay, so it's saying that I would have to quit and reopen it to share my screen. So I might step off for a second, then come back in, if that makes sense. Yep, that sounds good. Right. I am back. All right. Hey, hey again. Um, so yeah, do you have the screen share button at the bottom of your screen? Uh, yes, I do. Cool. Yeah, um, and yeah, if you want to try it out. Awesome. Working right? Yeah, no, it looks great. Sounds good. 
cool, sweet. And I just sent a little message out to the chat, just asking folks to send in their intros. And I already see a few coming in now. So um, me, feel free to go back and check those out at any point. But yeah, I'll keep an eye on them too and let you know if there are any questions. But yeah, I think um, I'm going to stop talking and I'll let you take it away. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Great. So thank you guys for coming again. Um, I'm going to be walking you through the basics or what I think are the basics of Photoshop. And um, I'm excited to do this. So I think I have about like the whole session broken down into four sections. So I'm gonna give you a brief like tutorial on Photoshop and how to use the tools and just several things, several other tools that I use that most people don't. So I would also have a logo design session as well. And um, I would also be designing a flyer live so i can't wait to show you guys what i have in store so yeah i'm excited yeah so the first thing would be the photoshop tutorial like i said then i think after the whole process i would um open up the floor for questions and answers so you know so whatever questions that you have just let me know and um i don't know rachel is it possible to take questions like during the workshop or like i would have to wait till after yeah, totally. It's whatever works for you. I'll be keeping an eye on the chat throughout. So what a lot of folks do, if you want to kind of stop periodically and just say like, hey, Rachel, are there any questions in the chat? I'll pop okay. on and let you know. Yep. Okay. All right. That works too. All right. Great. So um, if you have Photoshop, I would, you know, that would be nice if you'd open it. So um, just so that if you want to just like follow along and um, just tag along on what I'm doing. So I'm just going to switch to my Photoshop now. Let's see. That's it. Shit, all right. Put this to the side. All right, so I think um, if you go to Photoshop or if you have Photoshop right now, um, I think one thing you'd start with is go to Windows and you go straight to Workspace and um, you just hit Graphic and Web. Then you go back to Windows again you go to workshop workspace and you reset to graphic on web. So it kind of just like gives you, you know, the same, um, the same layout that I have right now. So the next step that I usually take is I like to have my layers like at the right side of my work. So I'm just going to take this and place it on the side to kind of like see, um, it's kind of like see all the layers that I'm working with. So let me know if you guys, you know, are there or if you're following along. And um, if you need me to stop, just let me know and um, I'll keep on moving. All right. So Photoshop is like one of the most basic, uh, no most basic. Yeah, I would say most basic uh, Adobe, you know, two. Do you need help anything? Um, yeah, we just had someone send in saying that you're going too fast. Just asking okay. what was the first thing you clicked. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, great. All right. All right. Thank you. Um, so the first thing I clicked was I went straight to Windows. So Windows is at the top of the Photoshop. Um, I think it's the same format if you have a Mac or if you have a, if you have a Windows like PC. So Windows, then you go to Workspace. You click on Graphic and Web. So when you click on graphic and web, you click Windows again, then you go to workspace and you reset graphic and web, right? So if you're at this point, then you're good. Right? So then, um, like I said, for just based off my own preference, I like to move my layers section. That's this layer right here. You could just like click, um, left click and like drag. So I usually put it on the right side of my of my um layout so and i kind of have it like on the you know on the right side so it's like kind of long and um i can see because i work with a lot of layers so i can see like all the layers that i'm going to be working with today so i think that is that is where i stop so let me know if you still have like any um issues with that and um i'll be happy to help all right so um so yeah so as i was saying Photoshop is one of the most basic um, Adobe, one of the most used Adobe applications. And, um, you know, it's good for photography, it's good for, for um, 
this is what called photo manipulation it's good for even doing illustrations and stuff like that and um yeah i use it a lot for for logos for for photo and for flyer design and for posters because i'm very comfortable with um with photoshop i think if you i think from what i know from most designers the a lot of them use illustrator for their logos which is like you know what illustrator is made for but then um you could also design logos in photoshop as well but if you really want to have like a really high res logo um that would be done in illustrator but then i'll just show you like the basics of how to create uh, a logo in photoshop so i'm gonna start with like explaining all the tools so this is your toolbar all these tools here this is your toolbar there are a lot of tools actually like if you if you click on um on mac if you click options on like the last like the last two you would see like a bunch of tools so I'm not going to go through everything, but I'm just going to go through like the main, the main tools that I use for, for design. So the first one here is a basic move tool. So I think what I'll do first is, um, yeah, so basically like with the move tool, you could like just click and drag on like you could move any, you could move your, like you could move any file that you have on on your Photoshop. So it's like, a, I think it's one of the most used tools in Photoshop. So you could just click and drag and um, you, know, you could move the file to wherever you wanna place it. Then um, one very common tool is called the rectangular marquee tool. So I would like to break this, the two sections down into like um, sections because you have like, you have select there's what you call selection tools so selection tools are the re rectangular marquee tool you have the lasso tool you have the quick selection so basically what this does is like if you have an object that you want to select um you could just use this rectangular marquee tool to select it and i think it's kind of like very you know basic and self-explanatory and like if you if you even put if you have the latest photoshop and you like put your your mouse over over the two, it kind of just like shows you a brief example of how to use the marquee tool. So I think Photoshop has done a great job in making it very easy to um, to move around in Photoshop. Then you also have the lasso tool, a lasso tool, um, and that's like more of a freehand selection. So I'll just kind of show you how to use it basically. So you just kind of take that, click on that, then you um, left click and just like draw whatever it is that you want to select and yeah and you have a selection so with this um selection what that really means is that you can like copy and paste this selection that you've made or you could even delete so let's say i was to um, change the the color in this selection what you do is you go to this tab here this like um, section here and you click on the last click on the background color, like the set background color um, space. And what that does is this shows, this opens like a color wheel or a color um, box. I don't know what you call it, but it kind of opens like a color thing and um, a color picker, I guess. So, and you can select whatever color you want to, whatever color you want to use. And, you know, you could kind of just experiment with different colors. And um, yeah, so let me know if, you know, you're at this point where I'm at. Um, but yeah, so let's say I was to change this selection to, let's say, you know, this type of green, right? Click OK. Then what I would do is, let's take this away. Right. So what I would do is you click on this section here. So there's a little like plus sign called called the create new layer tool so what that does is just once you click it it creates a new layer and you have layer two right so with that now um what that means is that whatever whatever thing you draw on this layer doesn't affect layer one so I, that's why like i kind of work with a lot of layers so i don't like to draw on you know already made layers that i've created so just kind of like give my myself room for for correction and mistakes so created a new layer then what i would do is if you have windows i think it's um control 
backspace on Mac, it's command delete. So that kind of fills up the, the selection that you've made with the color that you pick on this side, if that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions or if you're at this point where I'm at. And um, yeah, if I'm going too fast, let me know. And um, I will slow down a bit. So yeah, so basically you just click a command delete. And if you wanna you know, re undo your mistake, you just like click command Z or control Z and that takes you back to where you first started. So that is basically like um, the idea behind you know, the lasso tool. So what you could also do is if you want to take the selection out, let's say you're not interested in selecting anymore, you just hit like a command deselect. Or what you could do is let's say I'll select it again, you just right click and you just hit deselect. So that just kind of takes the selection away. So you have um, the next one I'll be talking about is a quick selection too. So this kind of like automatically selects um, objects in in a like in, a, in an image, you know, whatever it is you want to select. Like if you look, for example, now at the ice cream that is on the screen, oh, where did it go? It just kind of selects, you know, the, the ice cream itself, you know, and just lives the cone out of it. So I'm going to use that when I'm designing the poster and when I'm also like trying to design the logo as well. So, so that you can kind of see what I'm doing. Then the next tool is your crop tool. So this one kind of just like resizes images in Photoshop. It's a pretty basic tool. It's quite useful. Um, you know, you can resize it to whatever ratio you want to use. And once you're done, you just press enter and um, you're good to go. So I'm not gonna, I don't need to resize it. So I'm just gonna take that out. So the next tool would be the eyedropper tool. So this is one of my favorite tools. So basically what this does is this selects whatever color that you have on, a, on an image. Like for example, looking at the bird, right? You could select the blue or you could select the, the orange. So it's like, you know, it's a very nice tool and very helpful. The next one, which is a very um, common tool is called the brush tool. So it's pretty, pretty basic. It's, you know, what you use to, to draw on like a layer or something. So um how this works is whatever color you have on the foreground or whatever color you have at the foreground is what um is, that is what the color of your brush is so let's say you know like for example now this is a white color here if i was to take the brush and i was to go here and let's say increase the size to about 62 and i was to draw on this layer it's not going to show anything because it's white and the background is white, right? So hit command command Z and um, you go back to it and let's say you want to paint, you want to draw like with an orange color, right? You go straight to that, you pick the color, whatever you want to pick, then okay. And here you go, that's your brush too. So um, I use this for like, you know, freehand stuff and like, let's say, you know, I have an idea for drawing some patterns and I don't, yeah, maybe I'll search like the internet for the exact pattern I'm looking for and I can find it. I kind of sometimes like just, you know, try to use the brush to, to, you know, mimic the pattern I have in my mind. So yeah, that is about it for the brush too. And um, I'm gonna take that out by pressing Command Z. So the next thing would be um, the eraser tool pretty basic, it, it erases whatever, um, you know, you have on the, on the layer. So like, if, yeah, it's a pretty basic tool. And um, yeah, that is what I use to erase for sure. And moving on, we have the gradient tool. So this is a very amazing tool as well. So what this does is like, it creates gradient basically. So um, if you click on the gradient tool, you, you go to the top left, then you click on this bar here and that takes you, and that, get, that comes up or that brings up this window. So I already have like a color set up here. I think um, you could just click on this and that could change like the color, whatever color you want to change to. So I'm just gonna stick with the purple and um, you could also click on this too and that could change the color of the gradient. So. And I'm going to show you how that works in a 
in a minute. So you click OK. Then you have um, you have four five different types of um, ways to map your gradient. So there is a linear, there's a there's a circular, there's the anchor, I think, and there's um, there's the top and bottom, and there's a star, there's a star gradient. So with the linear, this kind of just like you know takes your color and um, puts them in like a layer format, like in a linear format. Sorry, so basic stuff. Um, if you click on the, the I think I can't remember what this is called exactly, but I think it's circular. Yeah, this is circular, the circular gradient. So what this does is it, it you know displays your color in a circular platform in a circular um, platform or a circular pattern. So basically, yeah, like, you know, have going from the purple to the orange. And that's what you have for that. Then this one is called the anchor, anchor gradient, I believe. And this just kind of creates a very cool, very cool concept. I remember when I was using Photoshop, like when I started using Photoshop, because before, when I started design, it was, um, I was using a, an app created by um, what's this people called again? Sketchbook. Yeah, it was Autodex. Yeah, that's what I was using. And um, I remember one of my friends telling me to to start using Photoshop, and I was like very skeptical because I felt like it was too complicated. And I remember this was one of the first like tools I tried, and I was like, oh, this is really cool because I couldn't do that on like Autodex, but like you know, Photoshop just kind of makes makes things a lot easier, made things a lot easier for me. So you have another um, gradient. I don't know what this is called, but it kind of creates uh, another like type of pattern for for the gradient. Then you have the star gradient, star gradient pattern, and this kind of just creates the gradient in a star form, basically. And yeah, that's that is it about the gradient tool. Then you have the text tool. I hope I'm not going too fast. Rachel, let me know if I'm going too fast. I feel like I'm going too fast, <laughs> but. Um, Am I good? Um, <laughs> I think you're good. I think one thing I've been telling folks is just like, obviously you have a lot to cover and we only have an hour and a half. So yeah. I've been like, there have been a couple of folks who've been saying too fast, but I've just kind of been saying like, um, we'll send out the recording after so you can kind of pause it. So if you do okay. think it's going too fast, but it'll be easy to go back later, that's good. Um, we did have one other question though that was submitted. Okay. Um, and yeah, I'd, I'd encourage people to send their questions into the Q&A if they have any, but someone yeah. was just wondering how you get like the white paper up to start, like just back at the very start. How do you actually get your, yep. Yeah. That's my bad. <laughs> That's my bad. So, um, okay, I'm just going to show you, I'm just going to do a quick um, showcase on how to do that. So you go straight to, I think when you close Photoshop, it kind of shows you, um, okay, no, I'm just going to do that now. So when you open Photoshop, this is what should come up if you don't have any file like saved already. So this is what should come up. So um, yeah, my bad, I should have explained this early on. Um, but anyways, so this is what would come up and you have different different type of presets. So you have like your photo presets, you have the print or an illustration, you have the web, mobile and um, the film video. So um, I'm just gonna go back to recent. So what I use most of the time is a 16 by 20 on a on the inches. So I sometimes you could use pixels, but um, that just changes the um, numbers to and shows you like the equivalent of pixels to inches. So I usually just put it in inches. And um, so you put that in inches, you change your width to 16, change your height to 20, your resolution to 300. And um, you put this on pixels and inch. You have the RGB color. That's what I design with most of the time. Then you have your eight bit and you have the background content. So it's white, black, background color, transparent, custom. So let's go with black for, for a change. So once you have that, this doesn't really matter. This is just advanced options. Um, you could just create a file and that gives you a background. Actually, we've done this early on, um, but yeah, that's how you come up with the with the white background or the black background or whatever you want to use. So uh, I hope that makes sense. So I'm just going to close that. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, yeah, the person just mentioned they didn't have it um, pop up. I think they have an older version of Photoshop, like 2018. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So uh, yeah, <laughs> that's all I know about that. Um, but yeah, I guess like for this session, like everything's with the most up to date version of Photoshop. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I think with the older version, it should kind of be similar to to what you know is on this too. But but yeah, that is basically how it is to create a new layer. So um, moving on. That's called that's what we call have um, the pen tool. So the pen tool is very is one of my favorites for sure. Um, this kind of just helps you create or like um, create curves and you know trace around lines and stuff like that. So um, I think using the pen tool sometimes a lot of people find it hard to use, but it's quite you know easy when you the more you practice, the more you know you get better at using it. So um yeah so you just kind of click the pen tool just go back again just click on the pen tool then you click and um click on another on another point and you kind of just like drag it so you don't take your you don't take your hand off the mouse so you just kind of drag it and if you're satisfied with your curve you let it go so if you want to change if you want to like change the direction of the of this line of this tangent so you just click options and you kind of move it you know, to your, your um, desired, you know, your desired point. So that's kind of like how the pen tool works. And when I'm designing the poster and the logo, I'll kind of show you how it works. So um, one other tool would be the rectangular tool. So this is a pretty basic, it just creates like shapes. So basically you just kind of left click and just drag and stop to wherever you know you desire so and you can kind of like transform you know change the the width change the height and stuff like that and that kind of helps you you know create your 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 square so that is or your rectangle and um, if you want to delete the layer you could do the old-fashioned way with like right clicking and going to delete layer but i usually just like i usually just press backspace yeah, so that's kind of how that goes. Then you have a round, I think it's called a, let's see, it's called rounded rectangular tool. So this just kind of creates a, a rounded rectangular tool. And um, I'm just going to show you how, because we're going to actually use this tool to design the logo that I have created or that I've like written down. So, um, so basically for this rounded rectangular tool, you just kind of click and drag and so basically you can change the um, the radius of the anchors. So like the, the edges of the squares, you can kind of just like drag that and that, you know, creates a cool, like a cool um, rounded rectangle. So that's kind of like, you know, what I use. I use it for, for some poster designs as well. So yeah, let me take this out. Yeah. So I'm just gonna delete that. And um, you have your elliptical or ellipse two, and that is, you know, you can draw your circle or whatever shape you, or whatever like um, oval shape you want to draw. But um, I play around with a lot of circles. So what I, to create the perfect circle, you kind of just click on shift, then drag. That's basically, you click on shift and drag, and that creates like a uniform, uniform circle. So shift and you click and drag. And um, you have a custom tool. So it's called a custom shape. So custom shape two. Yeah, custom shape two. Basically, um, Photoshop comes with sometimes it comes with a lot of like uh, shapes. So if you click on that and you go to the um, banner at the top, you should have check this out. You should have a like a you know an icon that comes up here, and this kind of just shows you your your shapes, you know, so Photoshop comes with different types of shapes. So it's right now it's set on the flower shape. I'm just gonna open that. So whatever like shape you have, and you could like, you know, install shapes from like um, websites onto your Photoshop if you know you're not satisfied with the shapes that you have, that you see on here. And um, let's move that to the top. So 
I've, cl I've clicked on the rose shape for the um, for the custom shape too. And I'm just gonna create a new layer and just drag, just click and drag. So um, of course this looks weird. So I'm gonna click on shift and drag to create a uniform shape. And that creates this, um, you know, pattern basically. And um, so I think what's next, you have like several other um, options at the top. So you have, and I would use them and I'll show you like, you know, when I'm designing, how I use certain, certain like um, adjustments and stuff like that. So if you click on the image um, tab, kind of just shows you like, you know, a list of stuff that you could play around with and, um, some, some of them are kind of like, I can't, I, I can't access them now because um, I'm not, you know, using, I'm not actually going to use them now. So um, until when um, the time comes, I'll show you how I use it. So uh, there's a layer tab. You could create the layer. Instead of clicking the plus sign at the bottom here, you could just create a new layer from the tab on here. Um, and you have filters, you have 3D if you're more into like, if you're trying to create like 3D on Photoshop. I haven't really used this a lot, but um, I think in the next couple of like weeks, I'm trying to do some 3D projects in Photoshop. So um, I haven't really done that, but if you're into 3D already, so you could actually use this to create some 3D content. And um, yeah, so I think that is that is about it for the Photoshop tutorial. So um, let me know if there are any questions and um, if you have any questions or you want me to go back on something, I would um, be glad to do that. So the next thing um, that I have in mind is I want to I want to actually design a logo from scratch. So I'm going to show you guys my creative process behind that. So first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the background color here, and I'm going to change this to white. So once I've changed that to white, I'm just trying to change this background color to white so i'll click on command and delete and that changes it to white so um so yeah i think that's what i explained earlier on so that should be should be easy to do then um so i'm just going to show you a sketch i made on my ipad last night in preparation for today so um i had an idea for like a for like an e-commerce store and, um, you know, cause I was really thinking on like, okay, what, what logo do I really want to design today? And how do I want to show you guys how to design a logo or what, you know, what company would I want to design a logo for? So um, I have an idea for a merchandise e-commerce store called Store Shuttle. So um, basically like I wanted to, I want to represent um, an idea of a space shuttle and a, and store it mixed together. So um, for, if you look at this, for example, I have like the store. Okay, I want one thing I want to represent the store is the shopping cart. And one thing that I want to represent the shuttle is a space shuttle. So I have that like, you know, sketch. Don't mind my sketches. Um, it's it's kind of just terrible. I think I think I'm getting better at sketching, but uh, yeah, but don't mind my sketches anyways. So yeah, uh, I want to merge this and this together. So I kind of just, you know, did that already. So one thing I would advise is when you are trying to design, um, when you're trying to design logos, um, I would say like you, you should try and like draw them on paper first, or, you know, just kind of think of the, the process that you want to, you know, you, you want to embark on when you're trying to create the, the logo. So I usually draw them on paper before I like start you know, doing anything in Photoshop. And once I feel like it looks good on paper, then I would create it in Photoshop. So, um, so yeah, so basically I kind of just had like the shopping cart. I took the, the bottom of the shopping cart and I merged it with like the, the first half of the space shuttle and that kind of creates this, this um, icon. And I think it's dope. So I'm going to show you guys how to create that. So, what you could do is you go straight to, all we're gonna do now is you go straight to file, click on file, you go to new, and that brings this tab again. So 
um i like when i'm designing my logo i like to design them in a in a square format so i'm just going to change the the width to or change the height to 16. so it's kind of just give me like a square format 16 300 for resolution pixels inch rgb color 8 byte and um i'll click on the background content put it on white and recreate so one thing that um, I'm trying to learn and with Photoshop is always save your work because it might crash anytime soon. Like you just never know. <laughs> you know, I thought I thought I was immune to my Photoshop crashing until when it happened to me like three times in a row. So um, I'm just gonna go ahead and save this file here. So you click file, save as, save on computer. And that you know that brings up a uh, that brings up a, your tab and you just kind of save it whatever file you want to save it. So I'm gonna save it as um, logo, logo design PSD. So you want to have it on the Photoshop format, whatever folder you want to put it in, and you click save. So so to start with this, what I'm gonna do is. Um, I'm gonna try and create this file here. So I think what I could do is I'm gonna just copy that. So I'm gonna use the selection tool to kind of just copy the icon that I already created. And you don't, if you're if you're following along, you don't have to, you know, create this exact um logo. If you want, if you have something else you have in mind, you could just kind of follow the steps and see like if that can apply to um what you want to create. So I'm gonna Click on, I'm going to use the selection tool, the rectangular marquee tool, and I'm going to just draw it over the part I want to copy. So once I have that selection going, I'm just going to click Command C and I'm going to take it to this other file here called Logo Design, create a new layer, and I'm going to click Paste. Or right, so that's Command V, so you paste that. So um, these are the colors I want to use. So to do this now, I'm just going to click on this layer here and I'm going to click Command T, so or Control T if you have Windows. And um, that brings up this blue line. So what this means is that you can transform or you can like, you know, reshape or resize whatever um, thing that you want to, you know, move or whatever thing you want to transform. So you can reshape it to whatever size. So um, if you want to do it uniform, um, it's still the same thing as when you draw in a circle or when you join a shape, you click shift and you just draw or you just like, um, you just drag basically. So, so I'm just going to take it and drag it up until this point and I think I'm satisfied with, no, I'm satisfied with this. So, and you click this and you're good to go. So, um, if you want to move, because I want to move this to, towards the center a bit, so I'm just going to use the move tool, I'm just going to move that. To the center yeah yeah i think the best way to kind of show you like how to use photoshop is if i do something live rather than just like sitting down and explaining like all the tools so um so yeah so the next thing that i would do now is okay how can i create this shape so i think from what i'm seeing here you can kind of like see there's a circle circle it's kind of like a rounded rectangle, rounded rectangle, rounded rectangle. And this too is kind of like a, say like a rounded rectangle, but like has a, um, has an edgy corner basically. So, so what I'm gonna do is to start with this, I'm gonna go to the rectangular, the rounded rectangular tool, click on that. And I'm gonna zoom in. So how you zoom in is you click um, options and you, zoom in or you just use your zoom in tool here and that takes you in and if you want to zoom out click on this and that takes you out so i'm gonna just like trace kind of trace the, the sketch i have basically so with a rounded rectangular tool i'm gonna take that and draw it across to my satisfaction it doesn't have to follow the, the sketch exactly. So um, I'm gonna draw that across and I'm gonna use the move tool to just move it up a bit. 
and I think this is fine with me. So it's going to get a bit technical now. So, um, so basically, this is what you have. Yours might be different. Mine is set to to create this type of shape. So, um, what I'm going to do is you go to your to your right side, and you have this section here. And what this does, this controls the radius of the corners of the rectangle. So um, I would want to move, I would want to increase the radius to maybe on the side. So I think right now it's on a 10. So I'm going to try a 40. Okay, so with 40, that kind of creates this, this radius, right? And I'm going to do that for the bottom as well. 40. And let's try 40 on this too. Okay. So here you have your the bottom of your shopping cart. So um, like I said, I wanted to use a green and beige color. So I'm going to change this color to green. So how you do that is you click on the rounded rectangle too. Then you click fill. Click on fill at the top here. And um, it brings up this color palette, but I feel like the green I want to use is very specific. So I'm gonna go, just kind of play around. And you don't have to use green, you could pick whatever color you want to use, but I feel like this is the green I want to go for today. Okay, great, so you have that. So now what I'm gonna do is, I need to create another rectangular, rounded rectangular um, shape for this, um, side of the cart. So what I'm going to do is click this. I'm going to click on the rounded rectangular layer here on the layer section. And um, oh yes, one thing that you could also do is to, you could name like your layers. Your layers. I don't name my layers because like it just saves me time. But for the sake of today's workshop, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna do that. So I'm just gonna name this bottom let's say sh bottom shopping cart. Let me know if you have any questions or if I'm going too fast and I will just go back on what I've done. So, um, so yeah, so now what I'm gonna do is instead of just creating the shape again, I'm going through the whole process of changing the, the radiuses. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the bottom shopping cart and click on Command J or Control J if you're using a Windows. So with that, um, what you could do now is you click on Command T and you see like it moves, you could move like it and you see you have two, you have two um, bottom shopping cart shapes. So I'm gonna click on um, that. So yeah, so basically you have two. So the goal is to move this guy here to the, to the right side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on my duplicate, which is called, let's say, um, top. Let's put top, yeah, top shopping cart or something. I'm very bad at names at times, so um, bear with me. Top shopping cart, so I'm gonna click on Control or Command T. And so you could like just rotate it. And I'm gonna rotate it to the, you know, to my preferred or to my desired um, destination. So, so yeah, so you click on, you know, the angle that you wanna, you rotate it to the angle that you want and, um, you know, and you place it on the edge of the of the other um, of the bottom shopping cart. So I think I'm satisfied with this. Oops. And just click on, or you, or you press enter, and that creates that. So so now we have the shopping cart. So the next thing now is to create the wheels, right? So um, go to the ellipse two. And what you could do now is you just click, you click, you hit on shift and you drag to your satisfied shape, satisfied dimensions of the shape. So that creates that. And um, you do the same thing that we did for the cart. You just duplicate it, which is command J, or you could um, click and you duplicate layer. And let's say we'll, And you could move that to the side. 
put that to the side and move this to the side. So um, Photoshop has like a smart um, grid system where like you could, you know, follow the, the lines of the other one. So I think I'm satisfied with this. I'm gonna change, I'm gonna change the color to green as well. So you click on the ellipse tool, click on fill, and um, it saves your your recent colors. So you just click on the first one that you you used. I'm gonna click on this too, and do the same thing. All right. So the next thing now is you want to create this this space shuttle right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the rectangular I'm going to use the rounded rectangular tool to create this. So draw that. So you just click on that, um, then you click and drag with shift. Oh, no, with shift actually. Sorry, you just click and drag to whatever. Um, desired dimensions you want. So with this now, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, um, you know, create the shape of the, of the sketch I have. So I'll just bring that down here. So to do this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Command T again, kind of just move it to the side and um, transform it to the length that you want to have it at. So I think this is pretty, this is pretty decent. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna click enter. So now um, the next thing is to create this radius here. And like I said, in the, when we were creating the bottom of the shopping cart, it's the radius on the right side of your screen or the right side of the Photoshop layout. Um, I'm gonna try and change it to, let's say, a hundred and let's see what that let's see what that does. Okay, hundred is too small. Let's try two fifty. Still too small. So I'm just gonna do five hundred then. Perfect. So that's five hundred. So uh, so that creates that. And um so I think I want I wanted to I wanted to be um at the same line of the shopping cart so I'm just going to take that command T or control T and I'm just going to drag that up and move this a bit to this side. All right. Let's take this. So I want, I want some space to be at the bottom as well. So yeah, you could just kind of transform and, you know, move it to your desired, um, uh, to whatever you know you want to move it to so click on this so now the next thing is now that we have a spaceship or a shuttle i'm just going to change the color again to green well, you know what let me just keep it on the orange for now so i wouldn't confuse you with this so the next thing to do now would be um so now i want to take out the I want to take out the space here. I want to take out some space here. So we don't we don't need this section here. We don't need this section here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on the rounded rectangle and I would click on rasterize layer. So rounded rectangle, that is this one here. Rasterize layer. And what that does is that lets me um edit the the shape. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on the pen tool. So the one that creates the curve. So you could use the create a curve. You could also use it to create a, um, a straight line as well. So I'm just going to click on that. And I think here it's fine. So I'm going to click on this side here and just kind of eyeball it and just draw a line. Just you don't have to um, draw anything really, just like click on wherever um, you're satisfied with. So I think that's kind of like, I think that kind of maps it well. Um, but then I want the shape to be, I want the lines, I want the lines to be the same um, length as this space here. So I'm just kind of gonna eyeball it.
yeah all right so once you have this line drawn across the shape what you could do is so the selection that or the part of the shape that you don't need you just kind of select around it select around it so with that now you have this like selection around the part you don't need and you just go straight to the top here and you click selection and what that does is that selects that part so now that you have now that you have this what you could do is you just go click on the rounded rectangle layer and you just delete and that creates that so that is gone and if you want to undo it you just click on command z and that brings it back so delete that i'm not going to use it so now um kind of have like a really nice shape here so the next thing to do would be to change the color of this so what i can do is we're going to use the eyedropper too but um that would be here actually so yeah so we're going to use this tool here and um we're going to select the green color we'll click OK, because so, we're trying to change the orange to green. So what we could do now is this. So the next thing to do now is to select this, select this so that we can like change the color to green. So what I'm going to do is you click on Control or Command and you click on that layer that you want to select. So that makes a selection around the object and the layer that you want to select, basically. So with that, um, I'm just going to command click on that. And because I've changed this color to green, it's going to change the orange to green. So I'm going to hit on command delete, Wait, command delete on the layer. And that changes it to green. Let me know if you have any questions or if that makes sense or if you're confused and I will be able to answer. Um, yeah. Hey, um, we have one question in the chat from maybe like five or 10 minutes ago or so. Um, mm -hmm. Actually, it's in the Q&A. If you can see the Q&A and you just want to hold up, that's cool too. Right. I wasn't sure if you could see them coming through. I know it's distracting to see the chat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, there's just one in the Q&A. If you want to pull that one up just from Meg, okay. it's just about, yep. I think you see it there. Yeah. When I tried to feel a selected layer, I got it feeling I could not feel it. Source pixels and selected layer. Uh, I think with this, okay, I think with this, yeah. Um, let's say, for example, I was to select, because I'm not sure, I'm actually not sure what that means exactly. So I'd have to see it, but um, could not feel they're not enough source pixels and selected layer. Oh, okay, I think I know what that means. So, um, see so when you want to when you want to select something you got to make sure you are on a layer that has a that has a um that has an object so i'm just going to show you exactly what i mean now so let's see hopefully it works so i'm going to create a new layer oh no i would just i'll use the space shuttle layer so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on the rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to select so I, I kind of just hit all the layers here so um, I'm going to select on the space shuttle and I'm going to draw across an empty space yeah so I think I, I don't know if this is the error message you're getting but um, if you're not selecting on an object or anything in that space like it's not gonna it's not gonna select anything so I think that is kind of my explanation for that. I'm not sure if that answered your question, but um, let me know and um, we'll see what I, I'll see what I can do. So um, back to the logo. So I'm just gonna unhide all the layers again. So yeah, so we kind of have like a decent, you know, shopping cart logo, right? I like this, it looks cool. So yeah, so with this now, um, the next thing is to create the windows, right? So for this, what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna use the pen tool again, and um, I'm gonna just unhide, I don't think we need this layer anymore. So I'm gonna unhide that. 
I'm gonna hide that stuff. And um, I'm gonna create a new layer. And I'm gonna click on this side of the, the spaceship or a space shuttle. And I'm just gonna try and like draw the, the windows basically. So, so yeah, so you just kind of click with a pencil, you just kind of click and drag, click and drag. And um, I'm gonna make a selection around this. So with this now, um, I've kind of created a, I kind of created a, you know, a window shape for uh, the logo. So I'm gonna do the same thing that I did the last time, click on selection, okay. And what I'm gonna do now is on this new layer that I've created, um, I'm just gonna title it Windows. So I want the windows to be like a little bit um, lighter than this green. Can, can you redo the color change for the space shuttle again? It's just, yeah. okay. All right, um, yes, I can do that. So um, let's go back. Gonna click on Command Z to when it takes me to where I had the color change. All right. Strange. All right. Okay. So I'm back on um, the orange color. So what I'm gonna do is. To change the orange color to green, I'm going to click on the space shuttle layer, command click, oh, command click on the space here, and that selects that selects this um, the shape. So I'm going to click on the space shuttle again, then change the green to this green here. And how I did that was to create this. How I did that was to open up this. Um, tab of the window and um, click on the green that I want to use. Click OK. So click on the space shuttle layer and you click on Command Delete. And that changes the color to green. So I hope that I hope that makes sense. So um, back on the, the window, I'm going to take the pencil again, click on outside the outside the space shuttle and I'm gonna draw click and drag a a space uh sorry a curve basically and I'm gonna click on select so with this now um kind of selected a fair shape for the logo for the window and um I want to change the green to a lighter. I want to change the green to a lighter, a lighter green. So what I'm going to do is, I'll click on the background color again, then kind of just move the cursor to this range. I think this is fine. So now I have a lighter green. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on a new layer. Then I'm just going to title that window. I'm going to hit on command delete. So I just made, I just made um, a shape, I just made the, um, the selection, the color that I wanted, the lighter green. So what I did now was I just clicked on command D to deselect that. So um, I want the, the window to kind of map on the, to be mapped on the, um, on the space shuttle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click, command click on the space shuttle to select the, the shape. And what I'm gonna do next is you go to your tabs at the top and you click on select and you click inverse. So what that does is that selects the outside of the green of the space shuttle, the outside of the space shuttle. So I'm gonna click on the windows, then click delete. So that takes out, 
that takes out that extra um, extra space or extra um, shape on the windows, if that makes sense. So I kind of had like my space shuttle. Take this all coming together. So um, the next thing would be to create the rest of the windows and it's still the, the, the same process. I'm gonna take the pen tool. I'm gonna create another layer, first of all. Um, windows two. And take the pen tool, click here. I'm gonna make it align with this, you know, in parallel with this line. So I'm gonna try it. I bought it. All right, so I'm just gonna do that and click on select. So that, you know, creates a selection Then I'm gonna do the same thing I did for the first one, for the first window, command delete, and that creates a shape. So um, same process, click on, click on the space shuttle, command click on the space shuttle, and that selects this shape, then you go to select inverse, and that deletes the extra space on window two. So um, I want to I want to create a line across it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna select the rectangular marquee tool and draw it across to create that space between that. And that deletes. So you just draw it across across the windows and you just press delete. And that creates that. So the next thing to do would be um, I'm just going to duplicate this window. So I'm going to click Command J and Command J is to duplicate it. Then you click on Command Transform or Control Transform. Mm -hmm. and just move it to the side. That creates a window. So yeah, I think that's perfect. It's not the best space shuttle in the world, but it's something. So yeah, I think this is this is the logo that I want to use for the space shuttle. So like there are a lot of stuff that goes into into this, like um, with research and stuff like that. But um, you know, like this is just a logo done in like thirty minutes, and um, there are several other stuff that I would want to do to make it more defined. So the next thing now would be to add a text. So I'm gonna click on the text the text section here. Oops, there's a text. Um, tool here, click on that and um, create a text box. So you have, I think Photoshop comes with like a bunch of bunch of text or fonts or whatever. So, but I, I have like my own fonts that I've used that I like to use most of the time. What is the command for the ruler tool, if there's one? Um, I think, it, I don't know, I don't know the command per se, but um, if you go to, if you click on um, if you click on this three dots here and you click options, it brings up like a whole, you know, other two bars. Um, and I think there's a ruler tool here. I don't use the ruler tool as much, but let me see if I can find it. Should be a ruler tool here. Yeah, that's it right here. Um, it's an eye dropper too. Okay. Yeah. So, um, if you if you go to the eye dropper tool, you click, you right click. Actually, you click on options and um, that changes the the ruler too. So I think when you click on I, I think that should come up. So um, that's the ruler too. And that kind of helps you like, that kind of like helps you, you know, basically measure a line in Photoshop basically. So um, yeah. And I think you have your, 
you should have your um the measurements at the top of the screen here yeah so i think it by default it measures in pixels and um yeah i think that's it but i don't i don't use it as much though but i hope that answers your hope that answers your question so back on the text too um so yeah as i was saying um you have have a bunch of text or a bunch of fonts sorry so i'm going to for this um look i'm going to use the, the i don't know how you pronounce it but i'm just going to call it a bento a bento font so um i wanted to i wanted to have the same green so i'm just going to change this color you can change the color at the top i'm going to change that to the screen so and there you go and um, you can change the size of your font change it. i'm going to change 100 and i'm going to write store shuttle With the zoom thing. <laughs> so um, yeah, so store shuttle, you can change the you can change the font, you can change the size, you can change the color, you can change the you know the position of the font as well, the position of the text. So I'm just gonna click enter and um oops, I'm gonna click enter or you just click on the check mark there. So I'm going to use the move tool to move it to the side. Yeah. So that's basically, that's basically my logo. Um, I hope this helps. So I'm going to just kind of resize the whole space shuttle. I might even take, I'm not liking the windows, but I think, I think they're okay, but I might just leave it instead. I'm just going to leave it. Yeah, but um, so I'm just gonna resize this whole logo. So what you could do now is, if you're satisfied with your logo, um, you'd click on all the logo files. Just click on them, and what you could do now is you would hit on you'd right click. Sorry. So what I did now to select to select all the um, logo files, you click on command, you click on command and you just select whatever file you want to merge. Yeah, so that's it. So um, to merge this, I'm just gonna, while holding command, I'm just gonna right click and you scroll down to merge layer. How do you curve text? Okay, great, great question. Um, so there's a way I usually do it. So what I could do here is, let's say we want to curve this star shuttle. Um, click on that. So there's an option here to curve. So you just click on this and um, it has different types of styles. So you have the arc, you have upload, bulge, shell loyal. So like you could create whatever, you know, um, type of curve you want to create. So I think the most basic is the arc one and um, you kind of just, you can change the bend, you know? So that's kind of how you, um, that's kind of how you curve text. Yeah. I hope that answers your question. So yeah, so now that I've merged the logo, all the logo files, I'm just gonna type it up, logo. And I'm just gonna click on Command T or Control T and resize it. Resize it uniformly. So that's holding Shift and resize. And here you go, that's my icon. And, uh, so I think for uh, the text, just gonna move that to the side. For the text, uh, I want to make the store, the store um, lighter. So I'm gonna select on the store alone and go here. 
and you have like you could make it bold italic you can make it regular you could make it italic so i'm just going to stick with regular i feel like this is cool yeah i feel like this is cool so yeah so that's the logo that um i wanted to create so now uh, i'm just going to jump right into creating like a basic flyer for um for your store let's say you want to you know do a, a launch now so you want to create a flyer for the store shuttle we're going to create it so um this is where you could like get really creative and like you know just try different things i know there are several other like um apps that you could use like canva and stuff like that that can help you like that can help you um create posters and flyers um i've never used canva so i don't really know how it is but um it's just from like people that I've spoken to about it, they're like, oh, they really like Canva and it's pretty basic. So, um, but then if you really want to, if you have a specific design, you could create that in Photoshop. So um, I mentioned that I wanted to use a, I mentioned I wanted to use a beige color. So I'm just gonna look for that in the color picker. So I'm gonna click on this background color, then try and find a beige color. So yeah, I think this is beige, yeah. And this may not be beige, but I like this color. So I'm gonna click on the background. So what you wanna do is just unlock this. So just click on that. And that just unlocks the file. And you can move it like anywhere you wanna move it. So I'm gonna click on command delete to change the background color. And yeah, this looks cool. So um, let's say we were to design something for uh, um, design a flyer for uh, for like the website opening or something like that. So I'm gonna click on command, command click, command click on the logo to kind of like, I don't think we need this anymore. So I'm just gonna delete that, so that's press delete. So I'm gonna click on these two layers. I'm gonna select these two layers and um, I'm gonna resize them. So that's, so how I resize them is by pressing command T or control T on Windows and I'm going to size them uniformly so that's using shift. Make it there. I'm going to drag that to the top. Yeah. So now um, let's say we're to launch a website or, you know, we've launched a website. So next thing would be to do like a now open type of thing. So I kind of have like a, let's say like, I kind of have like a, um, a layout of how I want the flyers to look like. So, yeah, so this is another thing that you could do, like, you know, just kind of sketch what you want on paper or what you think you have. So you just like, you're not, you know, wandering around when you are creating, when you're creating um, the flyer in Photoshop, basically. All right, so, um, so I'm gonna, I, like, with this design, I wanna have the logo at the top um, I'm gonna put now open shop latest collection, have some like weird shapes here and um, yeah, some other custom shapes here. So I start off by that. So now we have the logo at the top. So the next thing would be now open text. So I'm gonna click on text. I'm still gonna, I'm gonna be consistent and use the logo font for, for the text. So that is an mentor. Click on now open. Hey. So kind of move that to the center. I'm going to select everything. So just click and drag across the text. Um, let me know if you have any questions and um, I'll be able to answer them. So I'm going to click and drag on the text, then increase the font to let's say 250 let's see if that's big enough oh, that's too big let's try 200. Yeah, i think that's that's fairly okay yeah 190 would do all right so um you want this to be bold so people like uh well, what's going on so you know click on bold and um yeah looks nice so now open next thing is you know, to add this little description, shop the latest collection or whatever it is that you're launching. 
and um, we just create another text. So with, with flyers, your text game has to be like, you know, on point, you know, and because um, you want people to be fully aware of what you're doing. So you want to like very, like you want to be very like vivid on your your text or on your flyer, you know, on exactly what you're doing. So I'm just going to change the size of the text for, uh, let's say, 50. Yeah, 40, 40 would do. Shop. It's just selection. So sometimes I don't really like like when my um, text is like all compressed. So I like it. I like to spread it out. So what I'm gonna do is gonna select everything. Then there should be a section right here on your right. You should be able to do that. So at the top on your character tab, there's a there's a section called the VA. So with that, what you could do is you kind of just like click and drag and that like you know yeah that just like separates each letter so i think i like this let me know if that makes sense and um, if you want me to go over it again i'll go over it again so um i'm just going to reduce the font size to 25. okay i'll open shop list connection maybe 30. yeah you could make it go across like the whole now open section. So maybe I'll just kind of do that. Yeah. So 10060. Yeah. Great. So what's next? So we're just going to add like some shapes. So I, I think what I had in mind here is like maybe slap, in, slap on like the products maybe the product images for whatever it is that you want to sell. So um, you draw like a basic, you click on the rectangle tool and you draw like a basic, you know, rectangle. Um, go back to the layer. Yeah, I think, I think, I think the orange kind of goes with the beige and the, the green. So I think I'm satisfied with that. So, um, you click on the rectangle to on the rectangle um, layer, sorry, and um, you kind of just duplicate it because I want to have it on. I want to have three, so duplicate. Then I click on the move to move it, move it. Perfect. Here you go. So it's like a basic flyer, you know. Um, yeah. So the next thing that I would like to add would be like maybe the website and um, also add this. I don't know, I don't know what this is, <laughs> but I'm gonna try to like create that with a pen tool. It's just like um, some waves at the bottom of the, the flyer. I think this logo reminds me of something, but I really can't remember what it is. Like it reminds me of, a, of an existing logo already. I'm just trying to like figure out what it is. Maybe I was inspired by them. So you click on the text tool again, um, type in your website, store, shuttle. Store shuttle .com. Um, I want to move everything up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the move tool and just kind of select everything that I want to move. So what that does is that selects like all the, the files for you basically, instead of like clicking command and clicking all the layers, if you have like a lot of layers, you just click move and select. And if you want to deselect the, some of the layers that selected, what you could do is you just click on command and deselect. And yeah, cause if I was to, let's say I was to move everything as I selected it, right? that would actually move everything, including the background sometimes. But um, but yeah, so let's see how to move everything. So I kind of like to do it in bits. So I'm just gonna start with the text, move that up 
it's control oops see i didn't deselect the background that's why this is happening so i'm going to deselect the background and move that to the top a little bit all right next thing would be to move the move this the squares or the rectangles to select the background which is by pressing command click or you just i think i don't know you can just select here okay so you just click command and um move that up next thing would be to move the text here so i'm just going to click on that since that's the only thing i want to move move that oops move that all right so to create the waves that I was thinking about, right? Um, I'm gonna use the pen tool. So this is kind of like where I just get creative and um, I'm gonna just draw like a, you know, just mimic a wave pattern or just something that looks nice. Same thing as we did earlier, you know, kind of just like select, okay, create a layer. So I'm gonna try. I want to um, this waves. I want to make it a. I want to make it darker than the background. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna click on this, and maybe move it move it down a bit. So that creates a darker background. So I'm gonna click on Command Delete. That creates that. So. Um, Another thing I like to do is I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna reduce the opacity for for this you know new created layer. Let's try to do waves, and that's you just go here opacity, and that just like reduces the you know the intensity of like the design. So um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click Command J. Command J is to duplicate it and maybe like transform it, transform it, uniform transform, and that kind of creates like some, some wavy patterns. Do the same thing again. Yeah. All right, so yeah, just kind of create that, you know. Um, I'm gonna put some at the top too, so Command J. Some at the top. just like duplicating and like, you know, moving. Yeah, so it might be too much using like the waves then, but you know, whatever, um, I think this is cool. So, um, so yeah, so I think one thing that I would like to show you is, let's say I was to add a product image here. So I'm just gonna randomly select a, a picture, one of my pictures in my, in my files and let's say one of the products we had to sell was a let's say it was a poster right i said it was a poster so let me look for a poster here so to bring this so what you could do if you want to bring your file into photoshop you just take go to your file um finder and like click and drag onto photoshop and that like brings it in so yeah so let's say i was to sell this product right so i'm just going to click enter and i'm going to move this file on top of my rectangles on top of my rectangles so let's say i was to put this on the first one i'm going to use the move tool move it to the side maybe resize it a bit you know resize it to kind of match that um another way to do that would be like you would command click on on it then create clipping mask so command right click create clipping mask and that like 
takes the shape of the first of the first um, rectangle. So I'm just going to do that again. Sorry. Um, yeah. So that takes the shape of the first rectangle, right? You see. So yeah. And you could do that for uh, the other two. It's going to do the same thing and move this command T, move it over. Move with this one. And command right click, create click and mask. Duplicate it again, take it to the top of the rectangle. Move it here. Command right click. Create the mask. So hey, we're selling we're selling posters. All right. So um, the next thing now to kind of add depth to your flyer, what you could do is you'd go to you click on the rectangle, right? And um, you you can double click on it. You double click on it, or and what you could do is you right click, then go to blending options. So I'm gonna try and add a drop, a drop shadow effect on the rectangles, right? So I'm gonna click on this. That's what you call a drop shadow. And that kind of creates this like, you know, depth on your flyer. And you can kind of like move it around, you know, kind of reduce the, um, the opacity, reduce the size of the drop shadow, um, reduce the distance. Like that reduce the noise and yeah just like you know set it to your own preference and you click on okay and you have like this you know pop-in um product so i'm just going to do the exact same thing for uh, the other rectangles drop shadow i think like your it saves your previous preset so I'm just going to click on drop shadow and that would like saves the first, you already saved the first one. So I don't have to redo those parameters again. Legend options, drop shadow. And here you go. That's your, that's your flyer. Yeah. So I think that's, I kind of added like some shapes at the top. You could kind of do that, you know, so that it doesn't just look too basic. Um, let's try. So I'm gonna click on the circle on the ellipse tool and maybe draw like a circle, a uniform circle at the edge of the first of the first one. And maybe I would reduce the, the opacity. Reduce the opacity a bit. So it doesn't like it's not taking the attention of off the product. Maybe move that up on top of the on top of the rectangle. Yeah. And you could try like different shapes, you know, you could be creative around this. It, I'm just gonna duplicate it. Com command J, duplicate it, move it to another edge, you know, even reduce the size a bit. And you know. Do the same thing for the others. Move this here. Let's just keep on like, you know, it's a lot of like copy paste, duplicating, um, just trying different things, you know, using shapes. Like the moment you like, you know, practice and get more um, experience, like definitely you'd be a Photoshop wizard. So, um, so yeah, just keep on like, you know, duplicating and just trying different stuff. And if I want to change, if I want to try another shape, we're good. Hey, yeah, you're all good. Um, I was just checking in to say it's one three, which is totally fine. Um, I know you still, I think you were doing a poster. So like take your yeah. time as long as you have, go ahead and anyone else you can stick around, that's fine. Um, yeah. I unfortunately have to head out. Like I said, I have a dentist yeah. appointment. Um, so everyone keep me in your thoughts, I guess, but also I'm really excited to watch the rest of this me and it's been so great so far. Um, and yeah, um, in terms of, oh, sorry, go ahead. What were you gonna say? I said, thank you for having me. 
Yeah, no worries. It's been great. Um, and also Molly, another member of our team is here and she's one of the hosts slash panelists. So she'll be able to kind of moderate the chat and Q&A and wrap things up at the end. But um, yeah, anyone who wants the recording, reach out to me and best of luck with the rest of the session. E. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. See you later. <laughs> All right. So this is basically a flyer. So um, I think I'm pretty satisfied with this. I'm going to just click save so that I don't lose it. Great. All right. So um, moving on to the final section, um, I'm going to go and create a new layer. So I usually design my posters in a 16 by 20. So um, I'm going to create a new layer, 16 by 20 inches, pixel inches. 300 RGB and create. So starts off with the black post. So um, what I'm gonna do is if you want to create alongside what I'm doing, I have a, I have a file on, on a Google Drive. So I'm just gonna post that in, it's like a folder. Let's see. On that so uh, I'm gonna put put the folder in the chats and um, I'm gonna create a poster which you guys if you're interested in creating let me see if I can do that All right. All right so I just shared a file um I just shared a file. So if you know you want to if you want to use it, if you want to use the, the files and the you're free to use it. So I'm just gonna design and um for those that are still staying on, thank you. Um appreciate it. I know the time is up, but I don't mind going for hours on this. So um so I have a flyer or a poster that I created yesterday, and I'm just gonna recreate it to kind of show you like um the process behind it so let's i think i already opened it it's 275 so i'm going to try and create this poster um i just i just posted the the link to how to get like some of the resources to create this poster in the chat so um let me know if you have access to it and um let me know if you if you um, have any questions. So to create this now, um, I'm gonna play around with one, two, so one, two, three, four, five, about like six colors. So I think I have a file actually. Okay. Open recent Photoshop basics, yeah. Okay, yeah. So um, if you're wondering how I open this file, like, don't worry about it. Like, um, it's still the same size as the one that I created. Um, it's just that this one was pre-made and I had like the colors that I wanted to use for the poster. So um, as you can see in like the first, close some of these files, we don't need this anymore. Um, I'm just gonna close this too. Yeah, great. So I started off with a purple background. So uh, I'm just gonna use the background color, select the purple, click OK. Let's make sure. Click OK. Go to this file here, and um, let me see. You think you think of the colors before designing, or does it come to you in the process? later on um i think i think i just I, I think it just comes in the process later on like because the colors that i might use now might change like um in a few minutes because when i when i was designing this poster when i was designing this poster it wasn't the background wasn't this color it was like the green but then i slapped on a purple and i liked it so i was like hey okay we'll go with the purple then so um so I'm gonna work with the purple 
to go to the untitled, the, um, the file we just created. And I'm gonna click on command, delete to change the background to this. So the next step is to kind of create this like wavy, nice looking pattern at the back. So if you have the resources that I just um, made available to you, what you could do is, I think I have a file where I placed everything. Um, so done. So um, let's see. It's called a Turing, a Turing pattern. So organic Turing pattern, pattern one, I think. Yeah. So you just take that and bring that in Photoshop and you kind of just like resize it. All right. Resize it to, to the shape of the layer. So next thing um, I did was to, cause I, I don't like, you know, the way how like, bright it is or how like you know bold it is so um kind of just like reduce it to like let's say i usually put it on four percent and i think that's where it is four percent that kind of creates this nice pattern so the next thing now would be to create the the circle next thing would be to create the circle so um i used this color so what I would do is I'll select this foreground picker and click on the yellow. Then go to the ellipse tool. Then I'll click on shift and drag. And that creates this nice looking yellow. I really love the contrast, like because I've been you know trying to play around with a lot of colors. So um yeah. So now we have this nice looking yellow. Kind of looks like this, but like this one has a little bit more texture. And I'm just going to show you how I used, how I did that texture. So the next thing now would be to create another layer. So I'm going to create another layer, then click on this ellipse one, click on command, click on it to kind of select to select the circle. So that's what I'm, I'm just gonna select the circle. So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to create this, this um, texture at the back and I'm gonna show you how, how I did that. So I used the gradient tool to do that. So I'm gonna click on gradient and go here and I'm gonna change this color to the yellow we have here. So yeah, kind of show that in the the beginning process. So um, for this color, it's a little bit, it's a little bit darker than this yellow. So I'm just gonna move, maybe even use this color, but like maybe move it a little bit more to the side. You know what, bring it down a bit. And you could just like follow the same color I'm using. The color code is EEB008. So you could just use that if you want to use it and um, click OK. Actually, I think um, I think this color is actually more of an orange type yellow, but a little bit more orange. So yeah, the exact color code is FFC301. So I'm just going to copy that. Let's use that there. Yeah. All right, so we have this selection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this circle pattern, the gradient circle pattern, and I'm just gonna draw it across. I'm gonna draw it across that selection. And that kind of creates that depth, if you see like this clip, kind of creates that depth, right? So, and that's what I was going for. So the next thing, click on Command D, um, hide this layer, then, the next thing would be to crystallize this, crystallize this to give this like crystal type of, you know, um, texture. So with that, what I'm gonna do is I click on the new circle. 
click on the new circle, go to filter, then go down to pixelate. Go to filter, go down to pixelate, crystallize. So when you click crystallize, it kind of like gives you a little bit preview of of um how it how it, how it should look like, right? But then you know this is not like this is okay. I'm just gonna click okay. You, you know you can kind of see it, but it's not that um clear. So I'm just gonna hit crystallize again, and you kind of have it at the top. It saves your preset, so you just click crystallize again. Until when you get like your desired your desired look. Yeah, I think it's coming together now. I'm gonna try it maybe one more time. Yeah, yeah, I think that's okay. So that kind of creates this um, this crystal effect at the back. So now the next thing would be to put this um, amazing model in the layer. So if you have access to the Google Drive, it should be there. So I'm just going to look for the file in my downloads, found it. And um, all these files were gotten from like, like some of these files were gotten from Splash, like this one is gotten from Splash for sure, you can see it here. Um, but this other, this pattern here, I had to, I bought that pattern um, from, from a site called Spoon Graphics. So yeah, they have a lot of like free resources, Spoon Graphics. They have a lot of free resources. You could check it out if you want to, but they also have like you know some very amazing content that you just have to buy. So, so yeah. So um, with this now, the next thing is to select this model out of the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the quick selection tool. You click on the quick selection tool, and you just kind of select, select, and that's it. So um, there, I think Photoshop has improved over the years. So you have like select subject and select and mask. So select subject kind of just like selects, um, I think it's like, it selects what it thinks is in the image. So if I was to deselect the selection, let's say I was to select subject, let's see what happens. It kind of does, yeah, it does a fairly good job like selecting, you know, the um the object in in the image so now the next thing would be to copy this um, model out of the background so i'm just going to click command c or control c and um control v and yeah and that brings the lady out of the background so i think we're, we're getting there so i don't need this layer anymore so i'm just going to delete it and um, I'm going to resize this. So to resize it, as usual, we use a command C and resize. All right. So the next thing now would be to, to take out the hair. So um, yeah, so I kind of have the hair taken out and I created like my own shape. So I'm just going to do that now. Um, so on how you do that is by using the pen tool. So you take the pen tool, kind of just like eyeball it. It's a lot of eyeballing in Photoshop. But the more the more you do it, the more experienced you get at you know making sure things are nice and detailed. So I'm just gonna crop out the hair. Let's see. You can leave the hair if you want to and have like your own type of shape, you know, if you're designing along. And um, I'm just gonna click delete. And yeah, the braids are gone or the hair is gone, I guess. So um, the next thing now is to ha add like the, the new hairstyle. So same thing as the pen tool, same thing as you know, we've been doing for, for a while, you know, using the pen tool. So um, to create the shape, just gonna draw that. It's gonna, you know, just 
be free hand like don't don't you know put yourself in a box it's like kind of just do whatever comes to your mind you know it's a place to to be free all right so i think i'm kind of satisfied with this look and we'll click select click select so now um we have our hair so to make the color of the hair black i'm just going to click on the background color picker then maybe just click somewhere here and um the next thing would be to create a new layer so we create a new layer and we hit backspace no no backspace sorry command backspace yeah and that creates the hairstyle. Yeah, that creates a hairstyle. So that is that about that. Um, I'm gonna resize the model and maybe rotate the model um, to my left a little bit. So, uh, so it's just kind of looking straight instead of like looking up. So I'm gonna click on command and click on like all the layers that I wanna select and um, command T kind of just rotate it yeah and click ok so now the next thing would be uh, to create the the clothes so what I did was I used a rectangular I used a rounded rectangular tool I use this tool a lot like to be honest um, so I'm just gonna change the color to white, change your foreground color to white. Just draw, just draw it across. Maybe with the radius. And I'm gonna move it to the top of the model. And I'm just gonna rotate it. So that's Command T, and you rotate to your desired angle. Yeah. So now um, the next step would be to create this this angle. So what I would do is using the pen tool again, um, I'm going to rasterize this layer so that I can edit the, the shape. And I'm going to click on the pen tool, just draw a line across it. select and I'm just going to delete all right it's looking nice so now um the next step would be to create the um the clothes so what I usually do is I would just command click on the model then create a new layer then um I'm just going to change the this color to green so I'm going to do that again so you command click on the model, create a new layer, a new layer here, and then I'm just gonna command delete. So that changes the color of um, the model to green. So make sure it's on a new layer because you don't want to do it on the actual image because that would mess up the that would mess up the um, the image itself. So the next thing now would be to because we want the face to show obviously. So I'm just gonna take the eraser tool that a bit and just take out the parts I don't want. Yeah, let's take out the parts I don't want and um, yeah, it's looking good. So the next step would be to create this type of um, this type of pattern that I have. So if you have uh, access to the Google Drive, um, the pattern is in there. So I think it's called um, topography or something like that. Um, I got this about like a year or two years ago. So I've been using it ever since, since then. So it's a really nice pattern. I'm just gonna take that, I'm looking for it. Have a lot of files in this laptop. 
Yep, topography, and I'm just gonna place that in the Photoshop. So now um, I want it to blend with the green. So on that pattern, I'm gonna click on this little section here and just you know find a blending mode that goes well with the um, with the green. So I think divide is what I use. So divide kind of like keeps the white but takes the background out. It keeps the black actually, keeps the black, changes it to white, then take the background out. So, um, so yeah, so that's that's the pattern. So, um, I think I even like I like it. I like how it looks on the face too. But I don't want to mess up with the face, so I'm just gonna leave the face alone. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select, I'm gonna click on the green that we made, the green shape we made, or green color we picked. I was gonna click command click on that and that selects um, the green thing. So what you could do is you just click on the pattern, command C and command V. And um, that that creates a shape. So I'm just gonna take change just to divide again. And that's and that's it. There you go. So yeah, and it's looking good. So I think we just have a few. Um, edits left, so which would be the earrings and the button and the tears. So um, I think I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna click on this colors. So we're gonna go back to this one. Color the earrings. So now um, I think I have a circle and a polygon. So. Just gonna draw a circle on top, yeah, a uniform circle. Yeah. And um, if you want to get the polygon, um, the polygon shape, so I think that is in a custom shape, custom shape. No, actually, there's a another shape. I think. Yeah, polygon too. So if you go to the toolbar, there's a um section or there's a two they're called the polygon two and um you could change the size the sizes so like if you want to draw a triangle that's three um i can't remember the polygon like shape names but um i'm just gonna go five so five i think that's probably hexagon or polygon i'm not sure but anyways i'm just gonna draw that and that gives you a polygon so i want the polygon to be a uh, to be the orange or red type of vibe. So I'm just gonna change the color to, to red. And there you go, those are your earrings. And um, to create the button, what I'm gonna do is duplicate, duplicate the ellipse two, the ellipse on layer, that's command J and click on command T, resize it a bit uniformly and move it to this part. Oops. Just move it down. You could just draw another circle if you want, but I, I like to just duplicate stuff. So you could just draw another circle and um, yeah. And I changed it, I'm gonna change it to, to, to red as well. Just keep the contrast thing going. Yeah. So the last thing would be to add the to add the eyes, the, the tears. Sorry. So um, I did a freehand with the brush too. So the size was on a five, and um, I'll just create another layer. Move it to the top. So I'm go with that tears, and I'm just gonna draw it. Oops, I'm gonna use white instead. So it's gonna change the color to white. It's gonna draw it. Draw it across. It's kind of, you know. Let's try. Yeah, so I think that it's kind of cool. Uh, you could kind of like work on the details later on, but um, yeah, so this is kind of what I did then to add this like. To add this wind effect, there's a filter called wind. So um, before that, I'm gonna 
erase this bottom to kind of like have the tears blending with kind of have the tears blending with like um with the skin so it's going to reduce the hardness with the eraser tool it's kind of like you know draw that at, at the bottom so here go your tears then the next thing would be go to the filter stylize wind and um you could do the wind as a blast stagger um you can choose which direction you want it to go from so i'm just going to go from the left um and i'm going to keep it on wind so i'm going to click okay and you see that's what it creates so i'm going to do about two times i think two times is enough yeah perfect so that's it and um i think i reduced the opacity a bit kind of like look a little bit more more cool so i think this is it so yeah um and that's your poster i'm gonna post this today actually on my instagram so look out for that um but yeah that's it. that's about it for this design workshop i hope everything i said made sense um thank you guys for staying around thank you startups and for giving me this opportunity to to do this um i hope we can do more stuff in the future and um yeah i think that's it for me today thank you so much me um i think our my video isn't working but um thank you so much uh if you want to post in the um the chat your contact info if anybody wants to reach out to you um yeah. that would be fantastic okay all right then i'm just gonna do that then perfect um and yeah and if anybody is looking for the recording um you can just email uh rachel and she i believe posted her email in the chat and we will get that out to you hopefully today um so thank you everybody for coming um it was a really great presentation and i think uh very very educational um i know i learned a lot so thank you so much no problem thank you so much all, all right. right bye